Molly Gostrude and Odd Rogue, those are two decks that I was thinking, uh, we were thinking about being targeted specifically for the bans because Odd Rogue tends to be very good against other aggressive decks. Exactly. And of course, Malago Druid, one of the harder decks to face when you're playing a slower lineup that can go over the top. Yeah, both these players have done their homework and uh, picking the toughest deck from their opponent's lineup to exclude from this match. And uh, we'll see how it comes down to the rest of the decks. Right, and it's different archetypes, even though there are a couple of similar classes with Druid and the Hunter. But the Secret Hunter is a one of. That is very unique right. to Bloody Face. And it was something that was rising in popularity for a brief period of time during playoffs, but fell off shortly after because, well, the Secret was out. Everyone knew how good Secret Hunter was, and after people adapted to it, it kind of dropped a little bit in popularity and win rate, but Bloodface still took the bravery to be able to bring it to the big stage. Yeah, I... I... Your soul shall be mine. All right, game I one is about to start. Blizzard Arena, are you ready? I love the lighting. We always set the stage for the final match. Only one person can beat the fall champion. Take home $60,000. And I mean, Bloody Face, you talk about how he quit his job to pursue Hearthstone because it's something he's always wanted to do, to play games full time. And I mean, that is, for most people, a yearly salary already just for his first season competing since he quit. Yeah, you say that uh, he saved up enough money so that if things didn't go well, he'd be fine for at least a year or so. Well, he's be, uh, be doing all right for longer than that now. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so we have Kalisaz, Soul Infusion, Doubling Imp on the Zoo Warlock, but we also have Wild Growth, Oak and Summons into Master Oak Heart, and we talk about explosive opening. These are some of the most explosive you'll see in Hearthstone. Look, look at this. Turn one Kalisaz into turn two, Double Soul Infusion oh Imp. Gosh. This is, these players are just firing in all cylinders coming out of the gates here. Double Soul Infusion, turn two. That's a pair of six sixes. Language Hacker may have Oak and Summons for a, uh, an Iron with Golem, but that dies to a single imp. Yeah, I want to uh, tell a little brief story here. Uh, Admirable loves to play theoretical Hearthstone, where we just verbally talk about what we play and draw. And this is kind of like one of those games in reality. It's like, well, I just turn one Kel set, or yeah, well. I double Soul Infusion, and he's like, well, I draw Wild Growth and Token Summons. <laughs> and and it's, it's kind of crazy to see, well, you know, we'll see if the theory lines up. Who has the better start, and who can carry that into a victory? That's an interesting sp uh, spot for Language Hacker here, because obviously these doubling imps are uh, pretty problematic for him he has a second copy of oaken summons here he go for another iron with golem but that you know just doesn't really fight off the board he could use his carnivorous cube you know perhaps eat his uh, golem after uh, attacking into the keliseth that threatens two additional golems once he actually attacks it into one of the imps in the following turn that's right so even though this oaken summon mm. at first glance looks great to to pile it on i mean you pull it out of your deck so that way your iron with golem uh doesn't get drawn and then you're able to thin your deck but in reality does language hacker want this carnivorous cube to plan for the future turns and then swing the board because bloody face invested an entire turn into these double leaders. i really like this play from language hacker here he's using the carnivorous cube in a bit of an unusual way uh, but crucially, you know, he, he realizes that these two golems are not enough. He needs to get more value out of them. If he does play the Oaken Summons, he has no opportunity to get value out of the cube in a future turn. Right. So he, he recognizes, all right, well, I'm going to need to to deviate from my general strategy of using cube for, for later big minions and try to defend myself Ooh. right now. But that's a lot of damage already. Yeah, I mean, Happy Goal is, is fantastic when it's free, but it's still just a three-mana 4-4. Four, four. And, and, and actually, this Voidwalker is pretty important, too, because the Voidwalker means that Language Hacker doesn't have an easy attack to break open his cube. He may need to swipe down something to break open the cube in order to actually get uh, his his golems out of here eventually. He does have the, the Oaken Summon still, so he could get the other golem out, but we see yeah, like a little book of exasperation on Lang Attacker's face, because this is not going his way whatsoever. Right, if he wants to crack open the cube, has to swipe or naturalize the Voidwalker. If he does swipe the Voidwalker, he can use his hero power to kill off one of the Dumbly Imps and then crack open that cube, right. and then hopefully pick up the pieces afterwards. But it leads directly into the Fungal Mancer. It does, and you know, he, at least theoretically on board, it's like, okay, well, I end up with the, the two, th uh, two three sixes against a three health happy ghoul, mm -hmm. and then, you know, and also a, a damaged uh, six six doubling imps. Usually, a damaged imp tends not to be nearly that big, but uh, this has been an explosive start for Bloody Face. Right. And because it's a taunt uh it's a much more difficult deck to handle big wide boards. They don't have that luxury of spreading plague or Malfury and the Pestilence to stall. So these are critical turns coming in here for Language Hacker. And gonna let his opponent.
have that fungal mantra opportunity, which happens to be in Bloody Face's hand. Bloody Face just has it all, as it were. Fungal Mancer here, he can do tons of damage. Does leave himself in a position where uh, he doesn't have that many attackers that can continue to push once Language Hacker does break this cube open. Right. And Language Hacker does have the the Oaken Summons as well as a Naturalize. So if he does commit the Fungal Mancer and, uh, and push that damage here, uh, he'll be able to uh, or rather, Language Hack will be able to answer and, and build up a big board of his own, but not until after he's taken yeah. 16 damage oh. from these two imps. Yeah, and this is the turn that Language Hacker needs something big because turn eight onwards, he always has that threat of Primordial Drake, which makes right. Bloody Face double guess at a lot of things. So here he can Oaken Summons. That will gain him six armor, which is crucial because if he is going to play the Naturalize, it'll put himself into potential Soul Fire range, double Soul Fire range, uh, giving his opponent a bunch of cards. And he can break open his cube, so now he goes from being massively behind to putting an army of taunts on the board. He has three golems after this, and they actually are all well statted against what Bloody Face has in play, thanks to the uh, damage from the cube on that imp. Right, and because of that Kelseth buff too, you're giving your opponent stronger minions. Serenite Chain Gang, very intimidating when they both come out as three, four taunts. And the Voodoo Doctor pickup for Bloody Face is actually very good because he can keep his imp alive. Previously, uh, the three health in the imp meant, okay, that just trades into a golem. That's not that effective. But if he plays Voodoo Doctor, Chain Gang, uh, Librarian here, healing up his imp, he's able to uh, maintain a powerful board and really continue to push against Language Hacker. Yeah, the problem is we're talking about that turn eight. And right. Primordial Drake is a huge threat. And Voodoo Doctor, Cobalt Librarian, and the Imp would all be swept away by that two damage area of effect ability. Although, that's another Fungal, fungal Enchanter. Fungal Enchanter will potentially give uh, Bloody Face the ability to keep that Imp alive even more. But that it could potentially be attacked into. If he doesn't play the, uh, the Serenite Chain Gang here, it'll just be able to uh, attack into the Imp with mm -hmm. the Golems on board. So here I think Bloody Face is trying to measure out, well, how much do I want to try and play around specifically Primordial Drake? Because obviously that's a rough position, but I think, yeah, he recognizes, I gotta keep my big my big minion on, on board, because if I don't, I'm not beating a big taunt next turn anyway. Well, he also the option to not attack, but he's known that Language Hacker's been holding a, a single card for quite some time. And it most likely at this stage is Master Oakheart because uh, if it's not Primordial Drake this turn, Bloody Face almost has a certainty that comes down. Can Language Hacker survive just enough, just long enough rather, to be able to play this Master Oakheart and swing the board state? He has Nourish and he also has Naturalize. One interesting thing is because he has gotten both Golems out of his deck, if he, if he were to say Nourish for mana this turn, if he can survive, he can Oak Heart and then even potentially naturalize the Hadrox and get even more on the board. I don't know that he needs that. He may need the Naturalize uh, in order to just get a minion off the board to, to try and survive. Yeah, I mean, he's almost there's, just set on board. Right. Like, there's 11 damage that can get past these two Ironwood Golems, and he'd be at 15 after a hero power. That's very vulnerable to any soul, soul Fire. Kills you, right. And potentially Fungal Mancer kills you. Yeah. Time waits for no one. Yeah, not killing something with Naturalize here is, is really scary, but also we saw throughout the weekend, you know, Tyler, for instance, really tried to avoid playing Naturalize against Zoo, especially after they played Keleset because it's just so powerful. He's yep. just going to ramp. He is setting up for that Oakheart into Hadronox into Naturalize. Except the, the problem with that line is, well, the taunt minions that have died are two Ironwood Golems, at the, or well, three, actually. It'll, it'll, be, it'll have been three, but you'll also get the other minions from the, the Oakheart. You'll also get a dragon off the dragon okay, hatcher. That's true. That's so true. you end up with at least, what, 24 health in taunts off uh, of the, the Oakheart plus Naturalize. Okay, that much I can buy. But if Bloody Face taps here and finds, I believe, either Soulfire, Doomguard, or uh, or a Doom, or Soulfire, Doomguard, or Fungal Mancer, I believe he has lethal damage. Not gonna In the tap. Last name. I mean, he has this board space to play these three mana minions as well he and fill up the entire board. And it's also going to survive for Mortal Drake if this one draws it. That's that's true. And and the fact that he has this light warden that's gonna oh. heal so much means that even the even the biggest taunt he has a, a punch through. My my initial inclination was you, you want to go for lethal here, but <laughs> figure out okay, what do I want to talk? Oh yeah, the Hadronox, right. So now, as we said, there's the taunts. He gets oh it's four oh, golds, right? The cube! Right. 
because the, the, the cube summons an extra copy. 30 health worth of taunts, but it has to be broken up in the in the right way. So now, and, and also the Dragon Hatcher, Bloody Face will have to get by all of this. So he has, this is some complicated math here. Oh, there's oh! Soulfire though. That doesn't need to get through taunts. That goes right to the face. And in an explosive game number one, Bloody Face takes a lead. Big pickup here for Bloody Face to start off this best of five. And, you know, remember, the Naturalize got him closer to his Soul Fire. It could have easily been drawn by the Naturalize itself, but Bloody Face didn't have to worry too much about the trades. True. Uh, the yeah, that, that's just facts. <laughs> that's just factual. I mean, when you can play 12, 12 of stats on turn three, I mean, Please I think you're, keep copying me. you're most likely going to win. <laughs> uh, now let's go into Odd Rogue versus this taunt druid odd rogue definitely one of the more fearsome None decks in the survive. entire meta game largely because even if you know what's happening sometimes you just can't stop it the pleasure is and i'm looking at things like this cold blood and argent squire that's yep. been a classic combo even dating back to the beginning days of hearthstone it's true and language hacker has a pretty good draw of his own he has uh, spellstone oaken summons one of his ironwood golems if he does pick up the other before he can cast the oaken summons it will be quite unfortunate for him but uh Gonna go ahead and punch Gold off the shield. Yeah, and because of that uh, security of mine, Bloodface probably doesn't exactly have the, the incentive to Cold Blood right now. And I mean, now there's an even better target to Cold Blood. though. It's a vicious fledgling. It's a little bit of an awkward hand for Bloodyface here. He has Baku, which is a card you essentially never want to draw in the Odd Rogue deck. And then Libre, which is a great finisher, but not something you're looking for until later in the game. Language Hacker does have that Spellstone available. He can go ahead and punch the Fledgling and Spellstone it next turn to get it off the board. So no uh, no panic from him here. Oh, yeah. That thing is a must kill. And it's dead. Yeah. Bloodyface looking for an opportunity to start setting up his board. Another Argent Squire. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it is also a combo activator too for SI7 Agent. One of the things about Odd Rogue that you have to consider is while it's great to have early game minions, how will you space out your resources to be able to get the most value out of your hand as well? Yeah, you also need to consider what, what is my opponent gonna play next turn? Against Taunt Druid, you are expecting either Oaken Summons or Ironwood Golem. So you wanna set up a board that can answer your opponent's three, six well next turn. So, um, you know, perhaps uh, Bloody Face may want to play his Argent Squire and Dagger here so that he can use uh, the, the Cold Blood plus, you know, the, da the uh, Dagger itself to take out a 3-6 next turn. What about the SI7 agent just as a 3-3? Three, three? Also possible. I mean, I, I know Rosti even told me specifically about the value of having those three mana 3-3 three, three, three bodies on the board. And I'm not, I'm kind of saying that half jokingly too. I yeah. think the fact that it gives it, you four mana true. into it's, Argent Squire yeah, is really good. The, the SI this turn does enable uh, the Argent Squire plus Dagger plus Cold Blood next turn, which would put him in a similar position. Right. Though it would mean that he's only using Cold Blood uh, on the uh, the minion that's going to die. So I think that maybe the thought process here is, okay, well, if you play a 3-6, I can play uh, my... Ooh, the second Iron Golem. Mm. It's like I cursed him by saying he really hopes to not draw it before he can cast that Oaken Summons, no, but I know. that does mean that he just gets to play a 3-6 this turn instead of gaining six armor as well. You have a gift, Kibble. You have to be careful with what you wish for. This is my gift. This is my curse. Another Cold Blood. So here, because he chose to play the Argent Squire last turn, he can use SI7 Agent, which is a 3-3, and then Cold Blood the Divine Shielded Minion, so he, it's still threatening on the board uh, to get repeated damage in. Mm. Yeah, it seems like no matter uh, what Bladeface does, it's just four damage from the Cold Blood first and then SI, or SI and then Cold Blood, but the Cold Blood is a permanent stack. Right. You have your minion uh, continue that plus four attack for the future turns and force language hacker to have that swipe. Right. Or perhaps punch it and take the damage again. So you, you, you end up getting uh, additional value from the Cold Blood on the Divine Shield minion, mm -hmm. which it looks to be what Bloody this Face is toast. lining up to do. And again, important to mention, language hacker does not have those defensive cards from turn six onwards like Spreading Plague. Wrath is a good draw, a good pickup, though. especially with this Nourish. You can Nourish for Crystals uh, and then cycle down the uh, the Argent Squire here, which gets him closer to his ability to play large minions. Uh, it also does get a bit of card draw here, thanks to the Cycle of Wrath on the 5-1. Mm -hmm. So 
though. This is the, starting to get into the possibility of power turns for Language Hacker. If he does pick up his Primordial Drakes, his Sleepy Dragons, even Dragon Hatcher. Oof, that's a power card for Bloody Face, though. Myra's Unstable Element. He does have an awkward hand to, to play Myra's here. He doesn't actually get to develop much right now, but it can potentially find him cards he needs to be able to bust through what Language Hacker can play. It feels dangerous to play Myra's in this sort of situation when you, your opponent is going to be playing big taunts, but he also just doesn't have resources in his hand that will enable him to close out the game, so it, it may be a, a consideration for Bloody Face. Yeah, or maybe the Leroy just has to come down because you do want to Get pressure you. their life total, and you have a convenient 1-1 one -one to trade off so that That's Druid true. is a little bit more inconvenienced by the two health of Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, also also an absolute uh, reasonable option for Bloody Face here. Uh, it would leave him in an awkward position against a Primordial Drake, but frankly, his entire hand, any play this turn, is pretty bad against uh, the Drake, so he, he may just hope his opponent doesn't have it. to do, Bunny Face. Not much time left. I mean, Myers and Stable can c also going. help you play out your future turns. Yeah, this is essentially all in for Bloody Face here. Really looking to find Bile Spine Slayer. And oh, it's oh, not there. So we see a bunch of mid range minions, a bunch of three drops. Ooh, naturalize once your opponent has no deck has no drawback, oh. one cost, kill your minion, and de start dealing even more and more fatigue. That's a huge draw for Language Hacker. I think now Language Hacker, his win condition can just uh, kind of change in terms yeah. of stalling out his opponents. Sometimes what you want to do is drain your opponent of resources, but that might not happen. In this case, Blayfees might die just from fatigue before Language Hacker can hit his opponent one time. Yeah, now Bloody Face, you know, he, he didn't find a Vile Spine. He didn't find a Fungalmancer. He actually has no good way to just get through even an Iron Golem here. He, he can piece together, you know, say, Hench Clan Thug plus SI and trade his board off, but he, he needs to do better than trading his board off in order to actually get damage through and kill Language Hacker before he just dies to fatigue. Right, and if he sets up a big minion with the Vin Edwin Van Cleef, it will get naturalized. And of course, Bloodyface has to wonder, well, can I even play around that? It's coming up on turn nine. If my opponent has Master Oakheart, or even just Sleep uh, Dragon Hatcher that pulls out Sleepy Dragon, I need to find a way to get onto the board proactively. It, frankly, in Bloodyface's position here, he just has to hope that Language Hacker's hand and draws are pretty bad because he doesn't have great tools to be able to assemble anything. Perhaps his best road to victory is, you know, say, Firefly into a uh, Flame Elemental, into a Cold Blood to clear through, into a, a Van Cleef. I, this is just a really, really rough situation for him. I think with the Fireflies indicates he wants yep. to go for yeah, he Big did. Daddy Van Cleef. That's what he fits aside. He's like, all right, well, I don't have any goods here. I need something big. Van Cleef is big, but Naturalize is bigger. We see just snapped off by Language Hacker Woo! instantly. Oh, and the Lich King, the nail in the coffin here for Language Hacker. Not only does he Send Bloody Face deep in fatigue, kill his biggest minion, but he's got an 8 8 taunt as well. Army of the Dead is also a fantastic pickup for Language Hacker. Yeah, Bloody Face, he knows what he's got will not get it done, and this is a series, one game to one. Yeah, scoop him up. And, uh, a nice win, too, because the Taunt Druid, uh, if it lost here, would have to end up sweeping the Secret Hunter. And Secret three of them did qualify for the World Championship spot. It's going to game number three. We have Odd Rogue versus Shutterwalk Shaman. Yeah, this is uh, interesting because this is actually the opportunity for Language Hacker to take his first loss with Shaman of the entire tournament. He is so far undefeated with Shutterwalk Shaman. Yeah, Shutterwalk Shaman, um, you know, the, the matchup against Odd Rogue or just aggressive decks in general largely are dictated by how good its deck list is against aggro. So you see some Shutterwalk Shamans perhaps on the ladder with Wild Pyromancer and a bunch of removal spells, but Language Hacker has the greedier version. He has Prince Kelesed and he has Hemet Jungle Hunter to help beat those control decks by speeding up how fast he'll draw his combo. Yeah, Hemet uh, in Language Hacker's opening hand here would be fantastic if his opponent was playing control. It's a lot worse worse against aggro because right. you're usually not playing a turbo to my combo because you can't do things like spend six mana grumble go exactly because you just die 
uh, but against this control decks, of course, when you have all the time in the world, it just gets you to everything you need. So, uh, Bloody Face is going to start things off with the Argent Squire, a language hacker, kept three of the cards in his hand, and there's another good one in the Kalos set. Yeah. So while you might assume that based off of available data that maybe Shutterwalk Shaman could be the better deck to ban on, latter people are anticipating aggro, so they tend to play anti-aggro uh, mm -hmm. deck lists. And because Bloody Face knows that Link Hacks a little bit greedier, leave that open, try to punish it, and then try to uh, leave a, another deck out there like Odd Rogue, which is actually very good against aggro no matter how you outfit yes. your 30 cards. Yeah, and uh, Bloody Face dagger up this turn, sets up for Hench Clan Thug next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to the dagger for that reason. Electro Storm is a very good draw for Language Hacker. Allows it to double up on an effect like Healing Rain, which can be crucial to stay alive long enough to uh, outlast the resources of Bloody Face. Yeah, that's assuming that um, you know he can even get to that stage. Or, you know, because sometimes we see the Healing Rain come down, but there's just so much damage and pressure anyways that it mm -hmm. feels like uh, you didn't really do much. Yeah. The most important card for Language Hacker is really that Volcano. Uh, he needs to be able to keep mm. Bloody Face off of the board. If Bloody Face can't get in repeated damage, uh, then the Healing Rain is very effective at keeping him out of burst range of, say, Leroy plus Cold Blood. Uh, he's mostly trying to run Bloody Face out of resources, which is a reason that if Bloody Face finds that Myra's Unstable Element we saw him play last game, that it could be very important for him. Mm. Hench Clan Thug, traditionally the best three mana play for most Og Road decks. And you kind of amplify the fact that it's a very easy snipe on the Prince Kaliseth. And the fact that Bloody Face even stalls might make a player like Language Hacker consider, like, does he have something else, like a Vicious Fledgling that I have to be worried about? And, you know, there's no rush, and I like that from Bloody Face, showing a little bit of patience. Yeah, he has been playing quite carefully, quite methodically, throughout uh, not only this tournament, but the, the playoffs as well. He has, you know, shown uh, excellent poise under pressure. What? Language Hacker with the far sight off the top. Does have the ability to coin out Saturday Night Chain Gang, but I think he might want to save coin to help in more desperate situations, say if he needs to coin out Volcano. Yeah, I think that, that the uh, that the Earth Shock is interesting. It's one of the weaker cards for him to hit in terms of the cost reduction. He could just fire it off right now and take down that, uh, that Argent Squire. Uh, what he's likely trying to figure out is the implications of what Bloody Face can develop on his turn for that Volcano in his hand. Uh, that Earth Shock does really mess up the math for Bloody Face, though. He doesn't need to fire it off now uh, unless he just wants to you know, reduce the damage from that Argent Squire. That Argent Squire also potentially uh, can give a Blood Knight for Bloody Face the uh, plus three, plus three. That's right. Which may make it more of a threat than just a 1-1 one, one on the board. I think uh, Bloody Face also got some pretty important information too. If Language Hacker chooses not to play this Earthshock, Language Hacker hovering over it kind of makes it seem like there is a playable card, so it's not like a Shutterwalk being discounted. And here, Language Hacker does choose to, to neutralize the plus one plus one ability of the, uh, the Hench Clan Thug uh, rather than take out the uh, Argent Squire. This does reduce the overall damage uh, by more simply because it doesn't get the buff next turn as well. Bloody Face knows that Language Hacker could have that Volcano, could have Mind Control Tech, could have Lightning Storm. There's a lot of different tools in Shutterwalk Shaman to try and stop the aggressive deck from overrunning them. So how will Bloody Face uh, spread out his resources here? Yeah, Bloody Face needs to be trying to figure out how he beats essentially two different things. One is just a Serenite Chain Gang on Curve. How do I push damage past it if, if Language Hacker just has that? He knows that Language Hacker kept three cards and he didn't play any yet. So those are cards that are very likely to be in his hand. Chain Gang is one, Volcano is another. So he wants to try to diversify his boards and get enough pressure on so that Chain Gang just doesn't stop him in his tracks, but also uh, not necessarily invest so many resources that Volcano is backbreaking. Yep, holds on to the Saucy Deckhand just for uh, a little bit extra damage from the hand and develop the, the Firefly instead. You know, it's like you said, the 3-3 three, three Serenite Chain Gang, or sorry, the 3-3 three, three SI7 agent challenges the Serenite Chain Gang, makes it difficult for Language Hacker to want to develop this. To do. Especially with the threat of Fungal Mantle on the following turn, but he does yes. have Volcano. He has the Volcano, which means that he can uh, he can neutralize the, the Fungal Mancer after it comes oh, down. And, and frankly, the, the Chain Gang also just prevents a lot of damage, even if there is a Fungal Mancer here. You know, this is going to absorb six damage from uh, Bloody Face's board, and then that can just be followed up by a Volcano. There's the, the, the uh, Fungal Mancer, though, so that does mean that Bloody Face can get uh, past this Chain Gang and get some damage in. 
it's interesting to try and figure out what the best option is for Bloody Face if he chooses to play this Fungal Mantra this turn. Because if he goes on the Argent Squire and the Firefly, so uh, both options. Lightning Storm becomes kind of scary because he has so many minions that are, are uh, in range of potentially dying to that. And also, there's the threat of Mind Control Tech as well. Yeah, Mind Control Tech is one of the bigger uh, minions to consider in terms of how you buff because you're trying to spread out your threats, but it's like, you know, one or the other. You have to right. either make it wider so that way Mind Control Tech is less punishing if it steals your best minion, but if you make it too wide, then Lightning Storm just wipes you out. And of course, the worst case scenario is Volcano, which clears anything, everything anyways. And uh, when it decides, all right, well, I'm going to split like this. This means that Lightning Storm uh, does not have the possibility of taking out the Hench Clan Thug. Second Volcano drawn for Language Hacker, though. That's uh, a lot of tools he has to clear off this board. Right. Now, Bloody Face acknowledges that Language Hacker might just clear the board, but he's already gotten a lot of damage in. He does. And he also has a lot of damage in hand. The Leroy Jenkins and Deck Hand is, is quite a bit of burst. It has to be something that Language Hacker is uh, considering. He, he almost just has to Volcano this board here. There's you know, just so much threat. Uh, I would be shocked if he made any other play. Just coin out the Hemet. Go. <laughs> I got to combo you. Oh, wait, I'm dead? Oh. I mean, he's just literally lethal on board. Yeah, so this is 14, 14 life me. remaining, 14 power on board. And that's going to be a squeaky clean board state. Does Language Hacker coin out this Glacial Shard? I like it. Okay, yeah, and this, this is, uh, I think what he's really thinking about is how is he going to partition things over turn? The uh, Glacial Shard on this turn not only prevents Bloody Face from getting damage in with the dagger this turn, but also leaves him with a body on the board to threaten any development Bloody Face may make right now. And that's where the Giggling Inventor comes in. One of the superstar cards from the Boomsday Project expansion. Now this Bloody Face wants to extend a little bit deeper because of Mind Control Tech. Didn't see an MCT, so perhaps feels a lot more confident against it. Oh, oh dear. That could be very unfortunate Flame Elemental for Bloody Face. Yeah, and using Healing Rain here means Electra Storm Surge Healing Rain is not possible. At least until Language Hacker draws a second copy of Healing Rain. And in particular, Language Hacker hitting one of these Anoyotrons with Mind Control Tech yes. would give him an excellent defensive position when he would otherwise very vulnerable. Yeah. Unless uh, Bloody Face has the Blood Knight, but that's something that you're not accounting for right now. Oh! oh. The giggle, so still two it, Anoyotrons on the board. Cold Blood, is that just lethal? You know, no, he's, he, he have a dagger. he's one damage off. He has no dagger. The dagger would have allowed uh, Bladeface to either push damage. It's just one sure. damage off lethal here. Leroy Coldblood, that's 13. Language Hacker at 14 life. He can Fungal Mancer, dagger up, so attack with the dagger, options. push nine damage, but Language Hacker down to five. Man, and it's also important to kill off this Giggling Inventor because you give your opponent a weird ability to bounce the Giggling Inventor with Grumble and then develop again on the board with Anoyatrons that you can't get past. So I think the one two flame mental so might have to go. It into could. This it event. also shuts down the possibility of a second mind control tech. That's assuming that Bloodface doesn't want to cold blood here. You, you can just dagger down the one two. I mean, I, I think fungal mancer is is certainly happening. The question yeah. is, what else happens? Right. And dagger, I think he wants to do because he gets damage in over turns with uh, the, the hero power. Yeah, these are going face. The question is, what does a dagger do? What does a flame elemental do? I would suspect that the dagger goes face and the flame elemental kills the giggling inventor to prevent the possibility of an additional MC tech. Yeah, that's exactly what Bloody Face does. So, disaster averted from that mind control tech. But now, Electro Storm Surge plus Healing Ring could put Language Hacker back up to nearly full life. Pretty much, Reno Jackson. It actually is 24 life. In fact, exactly 30. Bloody Face, eh, time to start all over again. Oh, yeah, and if Language Hacker wins this game and this series, he indeed will be rich. One guy really likes the idea of getting rich. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> all right, Deckhand, Vile Spine. Yeah. And the ability to also attach a Cold Blood this yep. turn, which I think is really powerful. And now that is a bunch of damage coming in, but Language Hacker has the second Volcano ready to go. Second Volcano and a Manatide Totem. 
Clayface is disappointed. 19 life remaining. Leroy Jenkins, not enough to deal that. Bloody Face, he needs to find Myris. See a uh, grimace as Vile Spine Slayer is the draw. Two five cost cards in hand. Yep, almost no matter what Bloody Face does. Manti Totem or the Life Total, like either one of those are gonna keep, basically annoy Bloody Face at this point. Like the Manti is gonna keep drawing cards and he wants to remove it, but he also wants to push damage right now. And Leroy would just essentially trade with whatever your opponent has on board. It's interesting to go back and look at the turn uh, where the mind control tech came down because Bloody Face, he still had lethal with Leroy. I guess he drew the cold blood, so he wouldn't have actually had Leroy cold blood threatening lethal with the three minions he had. So he's still just trying to push as much damage as he could. But if, if for instance, he had not played the flame elemental, the cold blood draw would give him lethal since there was no stealing of anything on his, uh, his side of the board. And it may have forced language hacker to play uh, the healing rain that turn just to try and stay alive. With the Leroy, with sorry, with the Cold Blood already drawn, um, and there's only one more left in the deck, there's not too much incentive to keep Leroy in the hand per se, um, just because there's already so much burst damage that's going to be out. But it looks like Bloody Face not going to do anything. Punch you! Ouch! And if you're also language hacker, I mean. You've got a lot of resources and you know your opponent is really low on burst damage because of what right. he's already committed. I, I was thinking like, you know, how, you know, what's his best play this turn? And like, before he picked up the far side, I was like, well, Hemi Jungle Hunter is still a 6-6. Six, six. I guess Grumble Wolfinger is technically bigger. And you, you get to replay your mana tide here, get a big minion Works reward. You, he also leaves his other copy of Healing Rain in his deck. If you were to play Hemet, that's then, true. Healing Rains are gone. Oh boy. Big Baku, but that's... That's a 7 8. That grumble? That's an 8 8. Yeah, the Leroy wow. Vile Spine means that Bloody Face will be able to keep Leroy alive with, with what is available on board. And so Bloody Face needs that repetitive damage. Language Hacker does have that Lightning Storm and an Earth Shock. The Lightning Storm plus Earth Shock and the Whelp means he can guarantee clear the board. Mm hmm. And keep in mind, this Manti Totem is going to keep drawing cards. It is. It's really big for Language Hacker. And you know, we mentioned this can be uh, a matchup that comes down to just grinding the Odd Rogue out of resources, and that's exactly what Language Hacker is trying to do. So, oh, Ooh. God. Serenite Chain Gang with the Keliseth buff. That, that may be slamming the door here. Doesn't get the kill on the Vile Spine Slayer with the 1-1, one, one, but not that big of a deal. Bloody Face's Odd Rogue is getting shut out, as you said, Kibler. And Baku is the best minion, but when you're playing Baku in this situation, you are as desperate as they come. Yeah, that is the thick patches. Just going to be a body that, thanks to that double... <laughs> the Hex. Yeah, the, the double mind control tech, or uh, rather double mana tie just has given Language Hacker so many resources. Hex that, push damage to the face. I would not be surprised to see Bloody Face go to the bottom right-hand side of the screen sometime soon. Yeah, it has to be Myers and Stable Element, and even then, would it be enough for Bloody Face to turn back the tides? Because there's a lot of damage on the board. He's staring at 11 right now. He is not giving up. Yeah, Language Hacker sees though, he knows that means that, oh, nope, he is giving up. Okay, shooting himself in the face, I think. Bloody Face showing his cards, but scoops it up. Language Hacker on tournament point. He was one of the relative unknowns among the larger Hearthstone scene coming into this tournament, but he has absolutely put his stamp on this event so far. He is just one game away yes. for playing exactly for this deck, which Language yes. Hacker needs to get one more win to get over the hump. He has two favorable matchups here, around 55-45 advantage, which is, you know, significant. Not the most one-sided matchups you'll see, but perhaps good enough. Bloody Face recognizes what's important, has that Argent Squire and Cold Blood, but look at this no, candle shot. That can be survive. a huge MVP for this early game. A yeah, candle shot is huge in this matchup, especially with that Hunter's Mark. Lots of ways that Language Hacker can try to pick apart the early board from Bloody Face, no matter how big it gets. That Edwin Van Cleef looks a lot worse staring down the business end of a Hunter's Mark. 
And not even necessarily just the, the candle shot. Flanking strike is also a fantastic tool. Grizzly, also great. Grizzly, very good against decks that tend to dump their hand and all in. Assuming it's not a vile spine slayer, which might even be something that Bloodyface has to consider too. Uh, should he hold on to this coin to say play Van Cleef early, or should he hold on for a vile spine slayer? Perhaps vile spine's too slow compared to what he wants to do. I think Bloodyface may also just be considering: Do I play this Arden Squire here at all? Because it just dies to two swings of the candle shot with no right. cost to language hacker, and he decides to hold on to it. Yeah, and that gives language hacker nothing to do in the second turn. Captain Greenskin is the draw. Just gonna dagger up. Slow start for Bloody Face. He needs to be aggressive in this matchup because if oh, Tiger gets tied, those eggs come online and it gets messy. And with that vicious fledgling draw, I mean, Bloody Face has a pretty decent turn three, but with the flanking strike waiting, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, Language Hacker has the tools he needs. Flanking strike available for the fledgling. Hunter's mark for the next big minion. Grizzly cube. He, he really just has it all right now. Huge tempo swing as the wolf eats that bird. Yeah. Ow. It might seem like a, a minor nuisance, but it's a fairly big deal. Odd Rogue is coming up on turn five or five mana. And five mana is when Odd Rogue really starts to, you know, press in. The first two, three turns are just about setting things up. But when they have five mana, that's when Fungal Mancer or uh, Vile oh, Spines man, man. or when they even just start cementing their boards and push with, like, Cold Blood. That's, that's when it gets really frightening. And Bloody Face has no board whatsoever. Yeah, and Language Hacker still at 30 life. Hasn't even had to swing the candle shot yet. Bloody Face has been just slow right. in his development. He can coin out the green skin here and use his dagger to take down the wolf. So that is an option that gives him a fairly large minion on the board. Yeah, that and does. And leaves him with a, a weapon that, uh, that can t continue to threaten additional minions. That would mean that he doesn't have a potential coin vial spun available if there is, say, a cube on the, uh, the egg there. Right. But he does have uh, one mana play. So if he coins Captain Greenskin, Actually, what does Bloodyface do the following turn then? Because it's still a little it's, bit awkward. Right, he, de he doesn't have... He could potentially say yeah. Argent Squire, Gold Blood into uh, Van Cleef here. No, he's just gonna go ahead, uh, SI, yeah. save that coin. He wants to, to both sort of spread out his board here as well as hold onto the coins. So he does have the, the option of Vile Spine Slayering this turn. A second flanking strike, the draw for our language hacker though. Hmm. This flanking strike looks really appetizing, but it also might be bait because one of the things about uh, the Death of the Hunters, it does need to fight to get its own board developed. And flanking strike is development, but cube is actually what significantly better because you set up a 4, 6, and a 5, 5. It is. So I think this is really good restraint here from Language Hacker. You often just feel like, wow, the game wants me to win. So like flanking strike on a 3, 3. Yeah, and you know, this sets up a, a powerful board of his own. A second Cold Blood, that would be great burst if Bloody Face had been able to get damage in before, but he is in a rough spot. Yeah. Kind of what Language Hacker wants to see too by playing this. He lets his opponent utilize that Vile Spine Slayer and has a Witcher Grizzly plus a Hunter's Mark yeah. to clean everything up this turn. Yeah, this... Well, practically everything. In fact, actually, with the flanking strike now, yeah, he doesn't even need to play the Grizzly. Too. Yeah. He just actually clear the board. Nothing left for Bloody Face. I mean, face does have the Captain Green skin, but now uh, Language Hacker has tempo, and he's hold, held on to this Hunter's Mark, which is fantastic. Bloody Face again. A handful of great cards in your head, but just not when you're behind. Bloody Face's next turn is pretty, pretty sick. Arja Squire, Blood Knight, Edwin Van Cleef. That's massive tempo. He chooses to put in the Argent Squire. Might as well. Perhaps can use Cold Blood in the following turn. Mossy oh, Horror! Dear Mossy Horror for Language Hacker. It clears off the Squire. Wolf plus Candle Shot clears off Greenskin, and he gets an army of dinosaurs. Gonna 
take his time. Uh, I don't think but any I, time is needed. But I, I think that's what's going to happen here. And yeah. When life gives down. you devil sore eggs, you crack them wide open, Gibbler. Yeah, and here it is just the march of the dinosaurs until Language Hacker can close out this game. Bloody face. He has nothing he can do to deal with this swing. Yeah, that is a devil sore omelet. Bloody face concedes. Language Hacker is your 2018 fall champion. He has been around the scene for so long, putting up consistent results just below the surface of the championship tour. But now he is the champion. Canada has been put on the map for yet another year, starting with his birth in the World Championship and finishing with the actual title and the trophy. Look at the elation on his face and the relief. And a good sign that hard work does pay off. He talked about his preparation, talked about his dedication and his meticulous play. And couldn't be happier for the guy. Well played. He came back from a loss the very first day and just battled back and kept winning. Undefeated with that Shutterwalk Shaman deck. And I, I don't believe he lost more than a single game in a match after dropping the first. Yeah, this is something that also makes the Hearthstone community so special. Is the players are all so happy for Language Hacker coming up to congratulate him on his victory. $60,000 richer and the right to call himself the champion for this season. That's the goal of every competitive player it just wants to be on top. And today, that honor belongs to Language Hacker. champion it is language hacker it's been a long long weekend but you have managed to be the last man standing how does it feel it feels pretty good Cora just like last time but like just just a little bit better uh, yeah it feels a bit better yeah marginally Slightly now that there's the confetti coming down and you're the one that gets to just stand under it for a solid 30 seconds before anybody else comes up on the stage. How's this experience been for you? I know that you've had tournament experience before, you had an excellent showing at DreamHack Austin, but this was the first time that you really got to show what you can do. Well, uh, this tournament in particular was a bit of a roller coaster. I came in a little bumpy at the start. As you guys all know, I lost my first, uh, my first match against Blood Trail. Um, but after that game, I, I went back kind of like wiped the lack of confidence from my mind and just said, I need to go through and, and, and do what I, I know I can do. And fortunately, that played out very well today. As you can see, I hadn't dropped the set and I won the whole thing. Coming into that last series, Bloody Face, obviously fellow America's representative, great guy, great competitor. How are you feeling? A little nervous or did you just, just kind of know? Uh, I was feeling a bit nervous. I knew my, my hunter would probably be the... Uh, the uh, make or break. Uh, I have some anti-aggro techs in there, two MC techs, but I don't have an ooze. Um, it would ultimately, I think, come down to how the hunter performs, and I managed to uh, pull out a win with it. I got some good draws with the uh, flanking strikes. The mossy harb definitely helped a bit too. Um, yeah, I, I was nervous. Uh, Bloody Face was a, a good opponent, and I'm glad it panned out the way it did. A strong opponent, but you are the fall champion. And to present the trophy we have from the Hearthstone Esports team, Mr. Sam Braithwaite. Let's welcome him to the stage. So. Cool. Uh, on behalf of Blizzard Entertainment, it is my honor to present to you this trophy, $50,000 and the title of HCT Fall Championship. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Hearthstone Championship Tour Fall Championship. Congratulations to all of our competitors, all of our World Championship qualifiers, and especially to our Fall Champion. It is Language Hacker.
from the Americas region. Thank you all so much for joining us. Make sure you stick around for our post show, which will be happening right after this. And again, we will be seeing you soon back in the tavern for our next season. Let's hear it one more time for our fall champion, Language Hacker. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time. Have a good night.